angles measure the amount through which a line or an object has been turned. Greek letters such as alpha, theta, and phi are commonly used to denote angles. And we usually represent angles like this. This is the angle alpha. There are two main units to measure angles, the degree and the radian. You're probably more familiar with the first, but it is important that you learn how to express an angle in radians too. Both are defined with reference to a circle. Let's just start with the degree. If you consider a circle whose radius is rotated so that it ends up in its original position, we say it has been turned through a complete revolution. The angle that is equivalent to a complete revolution is 360 degrees and is denoted by this symbol here. Let's consider a circle. We know if we start here, a complete revolution would be 360 degrees. In the same way, half of a revolution, which would be this angle here, would correspond to 180 degrees. Then a quarter of a revolution, this angle here, will be 90 degrees. And finally, three quarters of a revolution, which is this angle here, will be 270 degrees. What about a radian? This is probably the most commonly used measure for mathematicians, even though in physics you'll be probably using more degrees. To define what a radian is, we are going to consider a circle of radius r and center o like this one here and we are going to consider a point here a and a point here b if we consider this length here the length between a and b that is called an arc in particular in this case this is called the arc a b if we talk about this angle here we say that the arc a b subsends an angle at the center O. This is the center and this one would be the angle. But what happens if the length of the arc is precisely the same as the radius? In the case where the arc length is exactly the same as the length of the radius, we are actually defining what a radian is. One radian is the angle subsended at center O by an arc whose length is precisely one radius. The natural question now would be, we know we have two different measures for angles, but how do we change from degrees to radians or from radians to degrees? We will start by thinking a bit. We said that an arc length R subsends an angle of one radian. Let's remember what we said. We have a circle here, and then we had our angle and then we define this distance here to be r so then we said that this angle has a measure of one radian if we increase the arc length by two so our r length now is two by r two times the radius then this angle would be an angle of two radians. What happens if the arc length is 2 pi r, which is precisely the length of the entire circumference? Just remember, the length of the circumference is precisely 2 pi r. So we said if the arc is of length r, then the angle is one radian. If the, the arc is of length 2r, then the angle is 2 radians. So if the length of the arc is 2 pi r, then the angle will be precisely 2 pi radians. Therefore, we know the angle of a whole revolution measure in radians is 2 pi. But at the same time, we know 
that an entire revolution is the same as 360 degrees. Therefore, we can say that 360 degrees is equivalent to two pi radians. As it happened before when defining a degree, usually when we talk about angles, we talk about positive angles. Positive angles are those measured anti-clockwise. Occasionally, you can find angles given with a negative sign, which means they have been measured clockwise. So have a look at this angle. This is an angle of 45 degrees. But what happens if I ask you to draw the angle minus 45 degrees? The angle of minus 45 degrees will be an angle of 45 degrees measured clockwise, which means starting from here, we will have this angle here, and therefore this one will be minus 45 degrees. It would be more common for the engineers to work with negative angles.